Wireless isn't an option in our products today, it's an expectation. Our systems use RF technology broadly to communicate about the environment around them, upgrade their capabilities through seamless software updates in the field, or to receive instructions on their next task. Is communication the end-all be-all of this ubiquitous technology, or are there new possibilities to give wireless an expanded new path? I can remember being an intern in the late 90s. Uh, it was really only just over 20 years ago or so, and hearing about this new technology that was going to allow me uh, to have my printer on one side of my cubicle, my uh, desktop PC on the other side of my cubicle, and be able to print from, from there to there without the bulky parallel cable uh, that had been such a pain to stretch across the entirety of the cube. Um, you know, at that time, it seemed crazy that this new technology named after some colorful Viking uh, could possibly allow me to do something so futuristic um, and, 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 uh, and, and capable. Uh, but today, we couldn't imagine a world without Bluetooth. I know for me, I couldn't imagine going on a run without it myself. Um, and, and I think we've seen so many advances in wireless technology, we kind of take for granted how quickly it's all happened. But as we look at this wireless technology that we're using every single day, is the communication of data really all we're going to be able to do with it? Or can we take some of these same radios like Bluetooth and do brand new things with it to expand what our applications are capable of? Today, I have the privilege of speaking with Bob Card, ASC Marketing Manager at On Semi, and an expert in this area about this. Bob, thanks so much for joining me today. Really always appreciate having your expertise on The Current. Hey, thanks, Todd. Thanks for having me as well. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, as we're looking at this and, and, and looking at some of the emerging technologies, one of the emerging technologies I'm seeing when it comes to Bluetooth and, and BLE um, is this capability of using Bluetooth radios, the newest Bluetooth radios, um, for location of objects or people within a building um, and being able to have that capability with existing file layers that, that exist in the Bluetooth radio itself. Can you talk to me a little bit about where that's going and what you're seeing with that technology? Sure. It's a, it's a pretty interesting space and uh, it's, it's pretty dynamic. And, and actually, I think it's just beginning, really. Um, so the Bluetooth, uh, taking a step back, Bluetooth is really governed by this uh, special interest group or Bluetooth special interest group or, or Bluetooth SIG. Uh, and they've done a great job back in 2010 or so. They kind of diverted from Bluetooth Classic to Bluetooth Low Energy. So Bluetooth right. Low Energy, that's sort of, a, you know, we're wireless, but there's a lot of other wireless options. How are we going to be, how are we going to be unique and stand out and be a niche? And that's that low power. So, yeah. you know, BLE low power. And so, Around So basically at that point, they started proliferating even more and they had the ability to measure proximity. So if you had uh, one device, uh, one, two Bluetooth, Bluetooth devices within, you know, give or take 30, 40, 50, 50 feet from each other, um, they can do what's called an advertisement and one device get advertised to another device. The device would see that in the advertisement right. would be a packet that has uh, the UUID, which is a universal identifier tells it what it, who it is, and right. also the transmit strength. And the receiver could measure that and say, um, with this RSSI or received signal strength indicator, and say, oh, you're roughly 20 feet away. However, it had no idea, let's say you and I are talking to each other, we're, you're a beacon and I'm, I'm the receiver. I don't know if you're in front of me, if you're right. behind me, to my left, to my right. So that's the problem. So in 2019, the uh, Bluetooth SIG came out with 5.1 spec. And in that, they, they uh, defined angle of arrival and angle of departure. And those two things enabled BLE to be a part of real-time location services and indoor positioning systems. So that was kind of the... And the big piece okay. of that is in the packet, and we all know we have packets. We have started packet into packet. There's there's delimiters inside, and you know it's very well sort of specified what you can do and can't do. So we, so we have that interoperability. They created a thing called the CTE, or the Constant Tone Extension, and that's an extension of the packet where you can generate these tones, 50, 250 mm -hmm. kilohertz tones, um, or receive those tones. So for real time location services, according to BLE. Uh, SIG, um, you have what's called a locator, 
and it sits somewhere, let's just say we have a room and it sits there and it's usually stationary and it's got an antenna array. And that antenna array, um, it controls this antenna array and this can be a number of antennas and they're specifically spaced apart from one another. Meanwhile, you can have these, let's call them tags. They're, they're things that are typically moving, right? And what they do, if they wanna participate in real-time location services is they transmit these tones. And what the locator does uh, is that it is a re it, it looks it listens to the to antenna one, reads right. the tones, goes to antenna two, reads the tones, antenna three, so on and so forth. And each time it reads in the tones, it can sample those tones and generate what are called IQ samples or in phase quadrature. And with the right. physics of those different antenna in different locations, it can actually pinpoint the uh, the the angular direction. So that was the that was the big step forward for BLE to be able to be part of that. And my name is Bob Card. If you ever want to talk to me about it at On Semi, I'm your guy because I'm all over that. <laughs> no doubt about that. And, and and I think we we at Future certainly have that experience. And yeah. um, you know, and the great results that uh, speaking with Bob uh, helps us with when we're working with engineers on these types of applications. So. Um, you know, definitely would, would love to make those introductions and be part of that as well. So, Bob, thanks so much. This is it was an absolutely incredible conversation. I think, you know, thinking about using BLE in these ways and, and also where some of the competitors to BLE, like Ultra Wideband, are, are going and the strengths of that competition is really, really impressive. And I've enjoyed the heck out of the conversation. Can't thank you enough for bringing your expertise onto the current if any of the audience, uh, hopefully you guys have gotten a lot out of this conversation as well. If you have any designs, like Bob said, uh, that you're looking at where you were looking at BLE or you're looking at positioning um, of devices, we at Future Electronics would absolutely love to help you. We'd love to introduce you to Bob for, for uh, those that, uh, that need his expertise as well. Um, so please reach out to us at Shaping the Future, one word, Shaping the Future at FutureElectronics.com. Again, Shaping the Future at FutureElectronics.com. We'd love to get our engineering team working with your engineers um, and make introductions to some of the great uh, other engineers and individuals that we get a chance to work with, uh, like Bob at On Semi. Thank you so much for your time today and your support of The Current. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Hey, thanks, Todd. I really appreciate the time. Have a great day, bud.